Hi, welcome to I Educator. This is Teacher Jeff. I'm an educator and an engineer by profession. And today, we will discuss Chapter 1. And Chapter 1 is all about information systems in global business today. Now, in today's lesson, there are seven key areas that I'm going to be highlighting. First, we have the transforming businesses through information system. Second, we have new in management information systems or MIS. Third, the emerging digital firm. Fourth, the strategic business objectives of information system. Fifth, we have the brief introduction to information systems. Sixth, we have dimensions of information system. And finally, we have the academic disciplines used to study information systems. Now, in order for us to get started, let us discuss first the first key area, which is transforming business through information system. Now, you can see the results of this large-scale spending around us every day by observing how people conduct business. Now, as you can see, people conduct business by way of changes in technology and new innovative business models. Now, for changes in technology, um, it includes the use of smartphone devices, okay, as you can see there in our sample pictures. And also, aside from smartphones, we also have tablet computers. And for new innovative business models, these are the use of social networking sites such as WhatsApp, Facebook, and Twitter, and a lot more. Now, this way of how people conduct business have transformed social life and business practices. We cannot deny that fact. And take note, some 2.8 billion people worldwide have smartphones, which is 50% of the world's population. And an estimated 1.26 billion use their smartphones for internet access. More than 1 billion people use tablet computers, about 15% of the global population. In developing and emerging countries, phones and tablets are the primary means of access to the internet. This is according to Pure Research 2016 and eMarketer 2015. An estimated 2.34 billion people now use social networks with Facebook accounting for 1.7 billion people alone. Messaging services like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, and Twitter collectively have over 2 billion monthly users. These all have become essential tools of business because that's where your customers, suppliers, and colleagues can be found. And aside from the use of social networks, we also have under new innovative business models, um, companies also make use of dot-com internet sites. Now, by June 2015, more than 150 million businesses worldwide had dot-com internet sites registered. In 2016, 1.62 billion internet users will purchase online, generating $1.9 billion in sales. Now, half of these sales will be from mobile devices, while still only 8% of the total retail global sales, online commerce is growing at 6% annually, three times the growth of traditional offline retail. Okay, so in 2015, FedEx or Federal Express moved about 11.5 million packages daily in 220 countries and territories around the world, mostly overnight, and the United Parcel Services or UPS moved more than 18 million packages daily. Now, aside from that, 
information systems changes businesses in a way that businesses are now able to sense and respond to rapidly changing customer demand, reduce inventory to the lowest possible, and achieve higher levels of operational efficiency. Supply chains have become more fast-paced, meaning to say uh, they have become more fast-paced with companies of all sizes, depending on just-in-time inventory or JIT inventory to reduce their overhead cost and get to market faster. And lastly, global e-commerce or electronic commerce and internet advertising continue to expand as well. Now, Google's online and revenues surpassed 80 billion euros in 2016 and internet advertising continues to grow at more than 20 percent a year reaching more than 194 billion euros in revenues in 2016 according to e-marketer 2016 c that's about one-third of all advertising in the world now as a summary these changes in information technology and systems, consumer behavior, and commerce have spurred the annual growth of digital information to over five exabytes every few days, roughly equivalent to all the libraries in existence. A recent study concluded that the value of information flowing between countries has grown 45 times since 2005, and the value of this information now exceeds the value of goods and finance exchange. So what's new in management information system? Well, plenty. In fact, there's a whole new world of doing business using new technologies for managing and organizing. So what makes the MIS field the most exciting area of study in schools of business is the continuous change in technology, management, and the business processes. Now, there are five changes that are of paramount importance. First, we have the IT innovations. Now, a continuing stream of information technology innovations is actually transforming the traditional business world, correct? Examples include the emergence of cloud computing, the growth of a mobile digital business platform based on smartphones and tablet computers. We have big data, business analytics, and the use of social networks by managers to achieve business objectives. Now, most of these changes have occurred in the past few years. Now, these innovations are enabling entrepreneurs and innovative traditional firms to create new products and services, develop new business models, and transform the day-to-day -day conduct of business. And in the process, some old businesses, even industries, are being destroyed while new businesses are springing up. And the next um, important change um, in respect to um, information technology, we have new business models. Now, for instance, the emergence of online video services like Netflix for streaming, Apple for iTunes, the Amazon, and many others for downloading video has forever changed our premium video, is distributed and even created, correct? Now, Netflix in 2016 actually attracted more than 75 million subscribers worldwide to what it calls the internet TV revolution. Netflix has moved into premium TV show production with 30 original such as House of Cards, which happens to be one of my favorites, okay? And also Orange is the New Black. This is also one of my favorite if you happen to see this uh, series. Now, challenging cable and broadcast producers of TV shows and also potentially disrupting cable network dominance of TV show production. 
Apple's iTunes, on the other hand, now accounts for 67% of movie and TV show downloads and has struck deals with major Hollywood studios for recent movies and TV shows. A growing trickle of viewers are unplugging from cable and using only the internet for entertainment. And another paramount importance or change under management information system that is e-commerce expanding or what we call electronic commerce, which is not new to us, okay? So when we say e-commerce or also electronic commerce, this is the buying and selling of products online, okay? electronically so e-commerce generated about 600 billion dollars in revenues in 2016 and is estimated to grow to nearly 900 billion dollars by 2020 e-commerce is actually changing how firms design produce and deliver their products and services e-commerce has um, reinvented itself again, meaning disrupting the traditional marketing and advertising industry and putting major media and content firms in jeopardy. In fact, Facebook and other social networking sites such as YouTube, Twitter, and Tumblr, along with Netflix, Apple Beats Music Service, and many other media firms exemplify the new face of e-commerce in 21st century they all services okay and when we think of e-commerce we tend to think of selling physical products correct well this iconic vision of e-commerce is still very powerful and the fast growing form of retail in the united states growing up alongside is a whole new value stream based on selling services not goods okay it's a services model of e-commerce growth in social commerce is spurred by powerful growth of the mobile platforms in fact 80% of the Facebook's users access the service for uh, mobile phones and tablets and information systems and technologies are the foundation of this new services based e commerce. Mobile e commerce then hit $130 billion in 2016 and is growing at more than 30% a year. And next, we have management changes. So what do we mean by management changes? Now, we need to bear in mind that the management of business firms has also changed. With no mobile um, smartphones, high-speed wireless or Wi-Fi networks, and tablets, remote salespeople on the road are only seconds away from their manager's questions and oversight. Business is actually going mobile as well, along with the customers. Managers on the move are in direct, continuous contact with their employees. Now, the growth of enterprise-wide information systems with extraordinary rich data means that managers no longer operate in a fog of confusion, but instead have online nearly instant access to the really important information they need for accurate and timely decisions. In addition to public uses on the web, um, let's say uh, wikis and blogs are becoming important corporate tools as well for communication or for not only for communication but also for collaboration and information sharing as well. And finally, we have changes in firms and organizations. Now, take note that compared to industrial organizations of the previous century, new fast-growing 21st century business firms put less emphasis on hierarchy and structure and more emphasis on employee, okay? Now, you can see some of these trends at work in the interactive session on management. In fact, millions of managers rely heavily on mobile digital platform to coordinate suppliers and shipments, to satisfy customers, and manage their employees. A business day without these mobile devices or internet access would be unthinkable. 
And the next key area that we're going to be highlighting today, that would be the emerging digital firm. So all of the changes that we have just described um, earlier, coupled with equally significant organizational redesign, have created the condition for a fully digital firm. A digital firm can be defined along with several dimensions. Now, if we say digital firm, it is one in which nearly all the organization's significant business relationships with customers, suppliers, and employees are digitally enabled and mediated. Now, core business processes are accomplished through digital networks spanning the entire organization or linking multiple organizations. So if we say business processes, these refer to the set of logically related tasks and behaviors that organizations develop over time to produce specific business results and the unique manner in which these activities are organized and coordinated. Now, examples of business processes are developing a new product. We also have generating and fulfilling an order. And also we have creating a marketing plan and hiring an employee. And the ways organization accomplish their business processes can be a source of competitive strength as well. Now the key corporate assets are managed through digital means. Examples, we have intellectual property. We have core competencies and financial and human assets. Now, in a digital firm, any piece of information required to support key business decisions is available at any time and anywhere in the firm. So, what is the edge then or competitive advantage of being a digital firm compared to traditional firms? Well, first, first advantage or competitive advantage Digital firms sense and respond to their environments far more rapidly than the traditional firms in a way that being digital gives them more flexibility to survive in turbulent times. And in addition, second, digital firms offer extraordinary opportunities for more flexible global organization and management. So what do we mean by this? Well, what I mean about this is that in digital firms, both time shifting and space shifting are the norm. So what do we mean by time shifting and space shifting? If it's time shifting, it refers to business being conducted continuously, meaning 24-7, rather than in narrow workday time bands of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on the other hand, if we see space shifting, it means that work takes place in a global workshop as well as within national boundaries. Now, work is accomplished physically wherever in the world it is best accomplished. Now, many firms such as Cisco Systems, if you happen to um, hear that, we have 3M and GE are close to becoming digital firms using the internet to drive every aspect of their business. Now, most other companies are not fully digital, but they are moving toward close digital integration with suppliers, customers, and employees. So the next key area that we're going to be discussing now, that would be strategic business objectives of information systems. Now, in this subtopic, we will be asking ourselves, what makes information systems so essential today? Now, why are businesses investing so much in information system and technologies? Well, in the United States, more than 57 million managers and 120 million workers in the information and knowledge sectors in the labor force rely on information systems to conduct business. Having said that, 
we can say that information systems are really essential for conducting day-to-day -day business in most advanced countries, as well as achieving strategic business objectives. Now, entire sectors of the economy, for example, are nearly inconceivable without substantial investments in information system. E-commerce or electronic commerce, like I said earlier, for example, we have Amazon, simply would not exist. Now, today's service industries such as finance, insurance, and real estate, as well as personal services such as travel, medicine, and education could not operate without information systems, right? And similarly, retail firms as well, such as Walmart and Sears, and manufacturing firms such as General Motors, Volkswagen, um, Siemens, and the GE require information systems to survive and prosper. So in today's world, 21st century, information system is very helpful and useful just as offices telephones filing cabinets and efficient tall buildings with elevators were once the foundation of business in the 20th century information technology is a foundation for business in the 21st century now there is a growing um, interdependence between a firm's ability to use information technology and its ability to implement corporate strategies and achieve corporate goals in figure 1.2. Now, in contemporary systems, there is a growing independence between a firm's information system and its business capabilities. Changes in strategy, for example, rules and business processes increasingly require changes in hardware software databases and telecommunications and often what the organization would like to do actually depends on what its systems will permit to do it okay so what a business would like to do in five years often depends on what its system will be able to do now increasing market share becoming the high quality or low cost producer, developing new products and increasing employee productivity depend more and more on the kinds and quality of information systems in the organization. Now, the more you understand about this relationship and the more valuable you will be as a manager. So specifically, Business firms invest heavily in information systems to achieve six strategic business objectives. First, we have operational excellence. Second, we have new products, services, and business models. Third, we have customer and supplier intimacy. Fourth, we have improved decision-making. Fifth, we have competitive advantage. And finally, we have survival. Now, one of the strategic business objectives of information system, that would be operational excellence. Now, here, the objective of operational excellence means that businesses continuously seek to improve the efficiency and their operations in order to achieve higher profitability. Information systems and technologies are some of the most important tools available to managers for achieving higher levels of efficiency and productivity in business operations, especially when coupled with changes in business practices and management behavior. For example, Walmart, the largest retailer on earth, exemplifies the power of information systems coupled with a state-of-art business practices and supportive management to achieve world-class operational efficiency. In fiscal year 2016, Walmart achieved 499 billion US dollars in sales, nearly one-tenth of retail stores in the United States and in large part because of its retail link system, which digitally links 
um, its suppliers to everyone in the Walmart stores. Now, as soon as a customer purchases an item, the supplier monitoring the item knows to ship a replacement to the shelf. And Walmart is the most efficient retail store in the industry, achieving um, sales of more than $600 uh, dollars per square foot compared when its closest competitor target at $425 a square foot and other large general merchandising retail firms producing less than $200 a square foot. And another strategic business objective of information system, uh, that would be new products, services, and business models. Now, information systems and technologies, as mentioned earlier, are a major enabling tool for the firms to create new products and services, as well as entirely new business model. Now, if we see a business model, it describes how a company produces, delivers, and sells a product or service to create wealth. Okay, for example, today's music industry is vastly different from the industry a decade ago. Now, Apple Incorporated transformed an old business model of music distribution based on vinyl records tapes and cities into an online legal distribution model based on its ipod technology platform now apple has prospered from a continuing stream of innovations including the itunes music service the ipad and the iphone and the next strategic business objective of information system that would be customer and supplier intimacy. Now here, when a business really knows its customers and serves them well, then the customers generally respond by returning and purchasing more, which is correct, okay? Now this raises revenues and profits. And likewise with suppliers, the more a business engages its suppliers, the better the suppliers can provide vital inputs. Now, this lowers cost. How to really know your customers or suppliers is essential problem for businesses with millions of offline and online customers. Now, for example, the Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group, which operates hotels in Asia, Europe, and the Americas, exemplifies the use of information system and technologies to achieve customer intimacy. Now, these hotels use computers to keep track of guests' preferences. When a customer, for example, arrives at one of these hotels, then the system actually automatically changes the room conditions, such as dimming the lights, setting the room temperature, or even selecting appropriate music based on the customer's digital profile. The hotels also analyze their customer data to identify their best customers and to develop individualized marketing campaigns based on the customer's preferences. And the next strategic business objective of information system, that would be improved decision making. Now, many business managers operate in an information fog bank. Uh, when I say operate in an information fog bank, what I mean about this is that they've never really having the right information at the right time to make an informed decision. And so for that matter, what managers usually do is that they rely on forecasts, best guesses, and luck. Now, in the past decade, information systems and technologies have made it possible for managers to use real-time data from the marketplace when making decisions. For example, a Privy Organics Limited a leading Indian company that manufactures, supplies, and exports aroma chemical products worldwide uses the Oracle 
human capital management system for real-time insight into individual employee information, including performance rating and compensation history. Now, this system actually helps managers uh, make faster human resource decisions, such as promotions or transfers, by integrating all employee records across the organization. And managers are also able to quickly review employee performance ratings for the previous three years and drill down into more details. And the next uh, strategic objective of information system, that would be what we call um, competitive advantage. Now, when firms achieve one or more these business objectives, operational excellence, new products and services, and business models, customer or supplier intimacy, and improved decision-making, chances are they have already achieved a competitive advantage. Now, doing things better than your competitors, charging less for superior products, and responding to customers and suppliers in real time all add up to higher sales and higher profits that your competitors cannot match, okay? Now, Apple Incorporated, Walmart, and the Mandarin Group are industry leaders because they know how to use information systems for this purpose. And finally, the last strategic business objective of information system, that would be survival. Now, take note that business firms also invest in information systems and technologies because they are necessities of doing business. And sometimes these necessities are driven by industry level changes. Today, most national banks in the world have ATMs and linked to national and international ATM networks such as Asuras. Providing ATM services to retail banking customers is simply a requirement of being in and surviving in the retail banking business. So moving on to our next key area, that would be the brief introduction to information system. Now, as you can notice, so far, we've used information systems and technologies informally without defining the terms. So what is meant by information technology then? If we say information technology, it consists of all the hardware and software that a firm needs to use in order to achieve its business objectives. Now, this includes not only computer machines, storage devices, and handheld mobile devices, but also software such as uh, Windows or Linux operating systems. We have the Microsoft Office Desktop Productivity Suite and the many thousands of computer programs that can be found in a typical large firm. Now, in simple words, information systems are more complex and can be best understood by looking at them from both a technology and a business perspective. So what is meant by information system then? If we say information system, it can be defined technically as a set of interrelated components that collect or retrieve process, store, and distribute information to support decision-making and control in an organization. In addition to support decision-making, coordination, and control, information systems may also help managers and workers analyze problems, visualize complex subjects, and even create new products. And also, Information systems contain information about significant people, places, and things within the organization or in the environment surrounding it. Now, by information, uh, we mean data that have been shaped into a form 
that is meaningful and useful to human beings. And data, in contrast, are streams of raw facts representing events occurring in organizations or in physical environment before they have organized or before they have been organized and arranged into a form that people can understand and use. Now, in order for us to better understand the difference between information and data, let me give you an example. So for example, so for example, supermarket checkout counters scan millions of pieces of data from barcodes which describe each product, correct? Now such pieces of data can be totaled and analyzed to provide meaningful information such as the total number of bottles of uh, dish detergent sold at a particular store, which brands of dish detergent were selling the most rapidly at that store or sales territory, or the total amount spent on that brand of dish detergent at that store or sales region, as you can see in figure 1.3. Now, as you can see in figure 1.3, in the left side uh, portion, you have their data. And on the right side corner, you have their information, correct? Now, as you can notice, these raw data are from a supermarket checkout counter, such as item number 331, Bright Dish Soap, with a selling price of $1.29. Also, we have item number 863, BL Hill Coffee, with a selling price of $4.69, and so on and so forth. Now, in order for this raw data to produce meaningful information, by the application of information system, it can be produced or it can be processed and organized such as the total unit sales of dish detergent or the total sales revenue from dish detergent for a specific store or sales territory. And after being processed and organized, we now come up to an understandable information. Now, as you can see, uh, you have their item number 331. The name of the item is Bright Dish Soap. And for this item, we are able to sell a total of 7,156 units. So if we will try to multiply this one with a selling price of $1.29, our total sales would be nine uh, nine thousand. $231.24. Now, take note that three activities in an information system produce the information that organizations need to make decisions, control operations, analyze problems, and create new products or services. And these three um, information, that would be input, processing, and output. Now, input captures or collects raw data from within the organization or from its external environment. For processing, um, it converts this raw into a meaningful form. And for output, it transfers the processed information to the people who will use it or to the activities for which it will be used. Now, information system also require feedback which is output that is returned to appropriate members of the organization to help them evaluate or correct the input stage. Now, as you can see in figure 1.4, you have their inputs process, which includes classifying, arranging, and calculating, and also we have outputs. Now, as you can see, an information system contains information about an organization and its surrounding environment, right? Now, these three basic activities, input, processing, and output, produce the information organizations need. Now, in addition, feedback is output returned to appropriate people or activities in the organization 
to evaluate and refine the input. Now, environmental factors such as customers, suppliers, competitors, stakeholders, and regulatory agencies interact with the organization and its information system. And the next key area of our lesson for today, that would be dimensions of information system. Now, to fully understand information systems, uh, one must understand the broader organization, management, and information technology dimensions of systems and their power to provide solutions to challenges and problems in the business environment. Now, we refer to this broader understanding of information systems, which encompasses an understanding of the management and organizational dimensions of systems, as well as the technical dimensions of systems, as information systems literacy. Now, computer literacy, in contrast, focuses primarily on knowledge of information technology. So let us examine each of the dimension of information systems. We have organization, management, and information technology now as you can see in figure 1.5 it shows that using information systems effectively requires an understanding the organization requires an understanding of the organization management and information technology shaping the systems an information system creates value for the firm as an organizational and management solution to challenges posed by the environment. And as you can see in figure um, 1.6, organizations have a structure that is composed of different levels and specialties. As you can notice, their structures reveal a clear-cut division of labor. Authority and responsibility in a business firm are organized as a hierarchy or a pyramid structure. Now, as you can notice, the upper levels of the hierarchy consist of managerial, professional, and technical employees, whereas the lower levels consist of operational personnel. Now, senior management, for example, makes long-range strategic decisions about products and services as well as ensures financial performance of the firm. On the other hand, middle management carries out the programs and plans of senior management and operational management is responsible for monitoring the daily activities of the business. And knowledge workers such as engineers, scientists, or architects design product or services and create new knowledge for the firm. Whereas data workers such as secretaries or clerks assist with scheduling and communications at all levels of the firm. And production or service workers actually produce the product and deliver the service. So as you can see on table 1.1, it represents the major business functions. So supposing you are the HR director of a certain company or corporation. Now you are responsible in hiring and employing qualified experts, right? Now once these newly hired experts are employed, they are actually trained for different business functions. And therefore, the major business functions or specialized tasks performed by business organizations consist of sales and marketing, manufacturing and production, finance and accounting, and also we have human resources. Now, the management's job is to make sense out of the many situations faced by the organizations make decisions, and even formulate action plans to solve organizational problems. Managers perceive business challenges in the environment. They set the organizational strategy for responding to those challenges, and they allocate the human and financial resources 
to coordinate the work and achieve success throughout they must exercise responsible leadership. And the business information systems described in this book reflects the hopes, the dreams, and the realities of real world managers. And for information technology, information technology is one of the many tools managers use to cope with change. Now, as you can see, Computer hardware is the physical equipment used for input, processing, and output activities in an information system. Now, it consists of the following. We have computers for of various sizes and shapes, including um, mobile and handheld devices. We have various inputs, outputs, and storage devices, and telecommunications devices that link computer together and second we have computer software and computer software consists of the detailed pre-programmed instructions that control and coordinate the computer hardware components in an information system now chapter 5 describes the contemporary software and hardware platforms used by firms today in greater detail so this will be uh, further discussed in chapter 5 and data management technology um, consists of the software governing the organization of data on physical storage media now more detail on data organization and access methods can be found in chapter 6 and lastly, networking and telecommunications technology consisting of both physical devices and software links the various pieces of hardware and transfers data from one physical location to another. Now, computers and communication equipment can be connected in networks for sharing voice, data, images sounds and video now if we see network a network links two or more computers to share data or resources such as printer now the world's largest and most widely used network is the internet and the internet is a global network of networks that uses universal standards or described in chapter seven to connect millions of networks in more than 230 countries around the world. And the internet has created a new universal technology platforms on which to build new products, services, strategies, and business models. And this same technology platform has internal users providing the connectivity to link different systems and networks within the firm and also internet corporate networks based on internet technology are called intranets take note private intranets extended to authorize users outside the organization are called extranets and firms use such networks to coordinate their activities with one firms for making purchases collaborating on design, and even other inter-organizational work. And the World Wide Web, or WWW, is a service provided by the Internet that uses universally accepted standards for storing, retrieving, uh, formatting, and displaying information in a page format on the Internet. And web page contains texts, graphics, animations sound and video and are linked to other web pages and by clicking on highlighted words or buttons on a web page you can link to related pages to find additional information and links to other locations on the web if you can notice if you try to visit let's say wikipedia okay and there is that certain link colored in let's say blue or highlighted in red and if you click that one you will be routed to a different page for further information and the it infrastructure provides the foundation or platform in which the firm can build its specific information system now each organization must carefully design 
and manage its IT infrastructure so that it has the set of technology services it needs for the work it wants to accomplish with information system. And the next and the last key area that we're going to be discussing right now, that would be the academic disciplines used to study information system. Now, as you can see in figure 1.9, it illustrates the major disciplines that contribute problems, issues, and solutions in the study of information system. Now, in general, the field can be divided into technical and behavioral approaches. If we say technical approach, um, the technical approach to information systems emphasizes mathematically based models to study information systems, as well as the physical technology and formal capabilities of these systems. The disciplines that contribute to the technical approach are computer science, management science, and operations research. Computer science is concerned with establishing theories of computability, methods of computation, and methods of efficient data storage and access. Management science, on the other hand, emphasizes the development of models for decision making and management practices and finally operations research focuses on mathematical techniques for optimizing selected parameters of organizations such as transportation inventory control and transaction cost on the other hand for behavioral approach uh, the behavioral approach does not ignore technology. In fact, information systems technology is often the stimulus for a behavioral problem or issue. But the focus of this approach is generally not on technical solutions. Instead, it concentrates on changes in attitudes, management, and organizational policy and behavior. The disciplines that contribute to the behavioral approach are, we have psychology, economics, and sociology. Now, for instance, sociologists study information systems with an eye toward how groups and organizations shape the development of systems and also how systems affect individuals, groups, and organizations. Psychologists study information systems with an interest in how human decision makers perceive and use formal information. And finally, economists study information systems with an interest in understanding the production of digital goods, the dynamics of digital markets, and how new information systems change the control and cost structures with the firm. All right, I think that's a good place to stop. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for the latest updates. Thank you.